Let's talk about five mortgage marketing examples for 2023, things that you can be doing right now that might be unique or different to what you're doing today in order to grow your mortgage business. And I'm actually going to use Sketchpad today and chicken scratch out my ideas for you guys as a new as a new fun style of video. So if you like this, let me know. If you hate it, let me know in the comments. Either way, I suppose, and depending on the feedback, I'll either do this style again or never do it again. I don't know, right? So, all right. So let's talk about five different things that you can do. So number one is what you can do is actually connect, right? People talk about social media and what we got to do is, wow, that's tough. What we got to do is we got to put the social back in social media. So we got to look for some opportunities to connect. So let's say, for example, when you connect with a new friend, right? When somebody sends you a friend request and you accept their friend request, or when you send a friend request and somebody accepts your request, what are you doing in that moment to create a connection, to actually go a little deeper in that relationship versus just sending that blind, just sending the blind request, okay? Um, when you have a new friend, you should, you know, connect with them, look for an opportunity right there where you can go, hey, I'm excited to get to know you and you can get to know me and I'm looking forward to, you know, getting to know you better right? Um, or you can go look through their profile and you can, you know, send them a message and mention something that they've got going on over there. Like, oh man, that's super cool. I saw you went to such and such an event. You know, I went to, I went to that last year, right? And you have a, you have a cool, you have a cool moment of a moment of connection. Psh, got a new, we got a new puppy. You have a new moment of connection with them. Um, right, right. When you're first meeting and first becoming a, you know, connected on Facebook or whatever platform it is that you're operating off of. Okay. The other thing that I love about Facebook is they're going to tell you, well, they're going to tell you when it's somebody's birthday, right? And when you know when it's their birthday, what are you doing and how are you using that as a moment of connection? Um, are you sending a video to them? Are you using their name? You know, how are you saying happy birthday to people? Are you not doing it? Because everybody likes to be said happy birthday, right? Nobody ever got frumpy over people telling them happy birthday. Everybody loves to be recognized and feel special on that day. And are you taking that opportunity that Facebook makes so easy? And are you doing that? Are you creating that? Are you creating that connection on their birthday? All right. So you got to look for that. So number one is, are you actually connecting? You know, are you, don't be afraid to take something that people are talking about publicly and go into private messages with it. And if they're talking about something, don't be afraid to go in to, you can always comment, right? It's not, it's not a bad thing to comment as well, but if you want to take it into a deeper conversation, maybe go into the DMs and say, man, that was super cool. What you said, you know, I was thinking about such and such, and you can you know, just create a little, a little quick conversation about it because people, why do people post on Facebook? Because they want to be seen, right? It's why people post on any social media platform. They want to be seen. And we want to show people that we see them. And we do that through interaction, through actually you know, creating this little, this little moment of connection. So that's number one is, are you creating, are you creating a connection? Okay. Number two is, is emotions. Okay. Now we're all pretty good with using emojis, but are you good with actually getting into emotions? Okay. And ideally your social media posts are going to hit on one of five one of five different emotions that we're looking for, basic human emotions. You probably already know what they are, right? So you've got happy. So that's the first one. Can we make people feel, can we make people feel happy by reading our posts? Or does also, can we evoke sadness in a post? It doesn't mean the whole entire post has to be one of these things, right? But if you're doing storytelling, this is why if you're, for example, if you're using the hero journey posts or you're doing anything where, you know, with creative storytelling on Facebook or on social media, you can look at evoking more than one, more than one emotion can be, can be happening in, in each story, right? It doesn't have to just be, to be one emotion. Okay. We also can go beyond happy and sad and we can go with anger, right? So that could be, um, that could be one that, that you want to make people fear or pe make people feel inside of a story. Okay. Then from anger, you also have fear, Okay. And then last one, and I'm sure you see what's missing here is love. 
Okay, these are like the basic emotions that we're looking for when we're doing storytelling on Facebook. So you're probably like, man, why are you talking about this? I thought we we're talking about mortgage marketing. But this is though, right? Because people, there's a gazillion people that are doing mortgages. And there's only one of you though. And so we have to make you the differentiate, the, the different thing. And why somebody wants to work with you is because of you. And if you're a creative storyteller and you can make people feel emotions and feel a connection with you in terms of what you felt and you could imagine that you could help them feel the same feelings that are going on within your stories, right? That's how they're going to create another level of, you know, another level of connection. And it's also going to have them looking for your posts. And so when you start talking, you know, if you make a business post or even in general with this kind of creative storytelling, I think this is a mortgage post, right? But it's, it's a creative story that you're not the hero in the story. Somebody else is the hero and you're just helping that person along to get, to get what they want. So you can help people feel emotions and stories. It's going to help them like you better. Um, help, you know, that whole not, no like and trust factor right there we're always looking for. Okay. Number three is live events. Okay. Live events. I still am a, the biggest believer that live events are the fastest way to grow your business. And in general, what I mean is, is that you are events, not ending other people's events. Okay. The host is the one that gets all the shine, all the credit and, and, you know, the authority gets put onto the host, not onto an attendee. So we want to be the person that's on stage. Even if you're bringing in a guest speaker, you're still the person that's introducing the guest, that's closing the event out. You're doing all that kind of stuff. But ideally, you're the one hosting the event, right? Whether, you know, there's a lot of different types of events that you can run. If you need ideas, just go to Amazon, grab the little black book of realtor events. I mean, there's 13 different ideas in here and it'll be everything that you need in order to, you know, have, have events um, if you just want to use events that already work and you don't have to recreate the wheel in any way, then look at the Legion of Loan Officers. We have 18 events inside that you can use right now to run your business, right? The, the slide decks are done, the presenter notes, the whole process to fill the room and follow up and turn them into partners. All that's available for you, but you can totally do this, right? So live events, obviously, you know, you could do something like a happy hour, Okay. I don't necessarily think that's where you should start. I think you should look at what, what can you do that's going to actually make a difference, okay? Where, how can you make an impact on somebody's business versus either just transferring knowledge or paying for food or you know, creating a social connection? But how do we impact their business, right? This is really, really important. People throw around the idea of value, value, value. But you know what's valuable is like having a realtor come to your event and they leave with being ahead of where they were before they came to your event, right? So maybe you make them do some work or whatever that means to you, right? But how do you make an impact on somebody? And then with live events, you know, the key, obviously, like anything else, is in the follow-up, right? So you got to follow up. The idea here is that we want to take the, those live events into one-on-one -on -one situations. And this is how you're going to be able to convert your, you know, convert your realtors pretty quick in terms of the highest ROI. It averages taking four to five hours with a new realtor to convert and start getting your first referral partners, or excuse me, your first referrals, like as clients. Okay. So if you do the ROI on a deal for you, even if we used, you know, 300K, right at a 1.5%, that's 4,500. If it took you four to five hours, you're making about a thousand dollars an hour right? For doing this work right here that I'm, what I'm telling you here on this live event process, that's pretty, that feels like pretty good money. You know what I mean? Thousand bucks an hour. You're well on your way to make a million bucks if you just were doing that consistently. Okay. So live events, I still think is one of the things that everybody should be incorporating into their business. All right. Number four is, is gaps. Okay. So everybody in their business, we all have gaps and you have gaps in your business. I have gaps in my business, okay? And sometimes it takes a different set of eyes to come in and help figure that out. And so if you can be a gap filler, this is how you create value, right? Everybody's always like, how do I be valuable? How do I be valuable? Right here is being willing to point out people's gaps and then offer to help fix it, not just 
pointing out their mistakes or their issues and challenges, but like, hey man, I see you're struggling with this thing. Do you need some help with that? Maybe I can help you, right? Let's get together. Maybe I can help fix that for you. That could be around ads. That could be around their database, you know? Um, that could be around uh, retargeting. That could be around, you know, Google, right? I mean, there's a lot of different things. Maybe it's on reviews. You know, there's a lot of different things that you could probably help fix, okay? Maybe it's maybe it's writing awesome emails. Maybe you're like a killer email guy and you can help somebody else do the same thing, okay? Look at what you're good at, what skill you have, what can you bring to the table, and you can go out and look for people that have these gaps. I mean, all this stuff right here is easy to see because with ads and database marketing, you know, online, you can just go to somebody's Facebook page and you can see if they're doing it or not, right? Same thing with retargeting. You can see if this is happening. You can go to Google and you can see what reviews they have. You know, maybe with emails, you can't really do that too much, but that's more of a question, right? But so a lot of this, you can just dig around yourself and you can see what people are doing or not doing. And then go to them and be like, hey, I see you're not doing this very well. Like, is that something you want some help with? Or are you happy with your results so far? Are you happy figuring it out for yourself or failing forward or whatever, right? You give people two options, but the second option would make them feel stupid. And it's like, you know, do you want, do you want some help fixing that? Or you just want to keep stumbling forward, right? And figure it out on your own, right? I mean, you don't want to say it in a negative way that's like slamming them. You just want to make it a dumb choice, you know? Like, do you want some help fixing that? Or you just want to keep, keep chugging along at the pace you're going right now, right? And people are going to make their own choice. Okay. So if you can find, find and fill gaps, that's a big deal. Okay. Last thing here is, is gifts. Okay. Now gifts, people are like, Oh, Respa. Yeah. Okay. That's true. But you can't give a gift for an exchange of business, but there's also, if you have a $50 limit, so you can give tons of cool gifts for, for less than 50 bucks. No big deal. The thing about giving a gift is it has to be personal, okay? It has to be personal. You don't want to give a gift where they feel like you probably gave this same gift to everybody, okay? You don't want to give that kind of a gift. You, you never want them to question if you gave this to multiple people or if this was only specifically for them. So you want it to be immediately identifiable that you took the time to do your research and get them a gift that was special just for them. Okay, so so a personal gift, that's going to be the thing. Now, if, if it has a logo, let's talk about this for a second. A personal gift is never going to have your logo. Okay, it's never going to have your logo. So it's not going to be a Yeti tumbler with your logo. It's not going to be that. That's not a personal gift. That's a business gift. A personal gift might have their logo. Okay, so it's not that it can't have a logo. But it might have it would have their logo, not yours, right? Um, I think it would be better just to have no logo and it just get something that's like super unique and special to them, okay? But gifts is the thing missing right now because you know the mailbox is empty, right? We can agree with that. So if you can go and get some stuff in the mail, you're going to be unique. You're going to stand out. Um, everybody loves giving, getting presents, especially something that they are not expecting or don't know is coming. And so use gifts as a way to stand out and be unique and get people's attention. Okay. Sometimes you can send them a gift. People have to respond to a gift, right? They're not going to ignore, ignore the gift. And so now you get a chance to actually engage in a conversation by sending something that's personal and meaningful. All right, cool. Had to rescue my cords from this little missy. And, uh, but anyways, so that's, that's five different ideas on what you can do right now. If you're looking for unique strategies to market yourself and your mortgage business, you know, telling better stories, creating more connections, having some, you know, some live events that you're able to convert from, you know, partners from the live events being a gap filler, if you're looking for a way to be valuable, that's by far one of the best ways to demonstrate value to a realtor is, is pointing out and then actually helping them fix and actually helping them fix those gaps. And then finally, using personal gifts as a way to show people that you see who they are, that you took the time to come up with a really cool 
gift that was going to be unique just for them and uh, and send that out as a way to either deepen a relationship or look to start a relationship with a potential partner that you've that you've been going after for a while. So if you have any other ideas, drop them in the comments as always. If you have questions, I'll make new videos based on your suggestions and we'll see you back here next time. Later.